and Jeremy for this <coughs> nice introduction. Yeah, um, you know, small note. So before you mentioned uh, uh, how to define AI. So this is one of my <laughs> activities for last two years, actually, as part of OECD and uh, Council of Europe and a uh, few other spots. And I think we are doing a pretty good job. Uh, the problem is uh, how to squeeze definition of AI into onto one slide, basically. This is uh, the challenge. Uh, seems like that we are doing a pretty good job. So watch, in particular, OECD uh, AI uh, committee and its documents. And I, I think we, we, we came up with pretty good definition of AI, which kind of encompasses pretty much everything what uh, tries to be AI these days, right? OK, but anyway, let's switch to the uh, presentation. Uh, uh, let me share the screen. Uh, OK. Um, so my presentation today is uh, on uh, uh, how AI can help, um, uh, how can help in digital governance, right? Uh, there's this one um, approach, let's call it approach or paradigm, which is called digital twin, which I will touch during the presentation, which seems to be the right way, especially for this uh, uh, times of uh, Corona crisis, um, but also otherwise, right, which could help. Um, uh, but let's uh, start with uh, some uh, nice slide, which I think it's a good introduction, uh, really, to what I try to say. Uh, I found these comics like a few days ago. I think it tells the story, really, right? So uh, the world is very tempting. Um, uh, when we decide to take simple uh, decisions, right? Uh, which are not always, but uh, often they can be wrong or not really perfect, right? On the other hand, we have, let's say, a little bit opportunities to do a little bit more complex decisions, uh, which, uh, well, hopefully they would be much uh, better, right? Now, the question is really <clears throat> how to, uh, how to do, let's say, complex decisions, but with, uh, with the help of, let's say, AI, uh, which could simplify the effort to make complex decisions right. Uh, so this is the uh, talk uh, about, really. OK, but uh, maybe we can start with uh, just one slide. What, what did we learn during the recent COVID uh, crisis? Uh, especially in the area of this uh, uh, digital governance. Um, first, speed of decision-making increased a lot, right? If we were used to operate um, on a monthly or annual basis, right, with uh, reporting systems, government protocols, and so on, which were just sufficient in most of the cases uh, in the normal times, now, uh, the unit of decision making uh, is often in a matter of days, sometimes even uh, within hours, right? Um, so speeds uh, increased, but systems were not really prepared to it. Then uh, there were so many unknowns, uh, and the systems were just required to adapt, to adapt to new situations. And um, but again, the system uh, governance in particular was not prepared for this fast adaptation. Then uh, sort of we are fairly good in solving isolated issues, isolated problems. Now, holistic view uh, to, to the complexity of the society, uh, it's something else, right? So we need to be aware also of the consequences. If we solve one problem, we shouldn't harm others, right? So holistic understanding is something which certainly is uh, uh, missing. Then uh, what's funny, data to do really good support decision uh, definitely exist, uh, but uh, typically it's not integrated and often not even accessible or easy accessible, right? And even more, technology is also available, uh, but not used uh, on a critical spot. So, so these are some of the lessons which I learned from somewhere from March uh, on, um, on many steps, not just in Slovenia, also uh, elsewhere, including European Commission, uh, and as I see also, uh, the uh, other countries have uh, the same uh, issues. Okay, uh, there's this one term which I want to highlight, uh, which is called situational awareness. Um, and this is something which is really a prerequisite for 
something which we can call informed decision making. It's not just decision making uh, per se, but it's informed decision making so that we really have uh, uh, decisions which are substantiated with a proper argument. So the term situation awareness is uh, old. Uh, you can find books uh, on it and so on, but it typically consists from three major stages, like right? perception, comprehension, and uh, projection. Right? Perception is really capturing uh, the data information about the, the, the system which we observe, let's say government in this case. Comprehension, it's well to understand basically what we uh, observed and projection is to reason uh, on, the, on the top of this comprehension. And then this can lead us to decision and action and uh, this is some kind of cycle. Now, uh, what's uh, good to say Perception usually in these days, it's uh, automated. Mostly it's automated, but uh, other activities like comprehension and projection are mostly still manual, especially in the governments. The other environments where this comprehension projection are automated, but in governments, I would say mostly it's um, uh, uh, comprehension projection are uh, manual. And this, this is causing a problem in terms of speed and quality of decision making. Right. And this is also a challenge for this modern uh, AI technology. Uh, now, what AI can do today uh, on the topic of uh, situational awareness? Um, uh, as said before, technology is available. Uh, and, uh, but this technology for proper situational awareness uh, is uh, used typically in complex systems, but complex systems which are mostly industrial. This would be like factories, manufacturing, energy systems, transport, uh, but let's say social systems like uh, uh, governments uh, and other subsystems of, of, uh, of, a, of a country, right? I wouldn't even say a state, a country uh, as a whole, um, are way more complex. Uh, why? Just because uh, uh, data is less structured, uh, there are so many uh, soft issues and this is way harder to model. So that's why this, I think, is the primary reason why this is not, um, uh, uh, why these technologies are not uh, used for the situation awareness in such systems. So as said, so most building blocks are available, but they are not properly connected. So data is available, but not standardized and integrated. Analytics, as you know, uh, is available typically even for free, uh, even the most complex pieces. So the big companies, big tech is, practically competing who will give more for free in terms of technology and analytics. But uh, of course, data is the issue. Um, and the third thing, I think this awareness and ambition, uh, especially in this kind of slow moving government circles is, uh, uh, is uh, lacking. So this would be maybe three, three key uh, uh, issues really to mention. So uh, now if we want to access, um, uh, 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 or use AI in this situation for to automate situation awareness. So what are ingredients which we need for this? So first we need to observe the world. The world would mean in this case, a uh, country, let's say, uh, country level or government uh, uh, level uh, uh, systems. So uh, we need to observe the world through real time data. This would include, let's say, mainstream media, social media, financial job market, health, environment, supply chains, and, and many others, right? So this, it's important that it's real time, otherwise, well, situation awareness just cannot function, right? Because it's by definition, it's kind of near real time. Next thing is um, integration of all this data. It's not enough to have the data, but we need to integrate it properly, right? With something which we could call these days, knowledge graph, uh, using either semantic web or statistical technologies. We have many ways how to integrate the data. Then uh, extremely important element is um, to encode uh, uh, human common sense in, uh, in the form of experience and knowledge uh, into such a knowledge graph. There's immense uh, amount of this knowledge which is not necessarily captured by, by data itself, but uh, people have it. Uh, so integrating this knowledge uh, is very important. And once we have all this, then to use not just a simple narrow AI, which is popular these days, right? Uh, but uh, to have a little bit broader uh, uh, AI, like 
causal reasoning and uh, techniques which are available but not really too popular yet um, uh, to connect the dots, right? And, uh, well, the point uh, Jeremy was mentioning before, right? Uh, there are issues and one of the important issues related to AI these days is uh, to deliver inf explanations and to deliver information in an under human understandable way. Uh, and we can do this. Uh, it's just uh, the current uh, modern uh, deep learning techniques, they usually are not uh, of that kind. So certainly we need to look at the, the social dynamics in a structured way. This is very important uh, element. Uh, okay, here's uh, one, uh, uh, well, kind of simplified slide, I would say, what kind of questions we would like to answer when we reason about these complex social systems. Uh, so probably everybody knows about this, uh, uh, five W's, right, uh, paradigm, uh, uh, which has uh, five W questions, uh, which I extended here with two more, which I think are very critical, um, and they are the most difficult ones. So it's typically what we want. We want to answer these seven questions for history, present situation, and for the future. This would be ideal situation. So the questions are, what, so the content, when, when things happen, where, geographically, who, who is involved, whose, this would be the provenance, so uh, the origin of the information, so this is a very important element for trust, building trust, and then these two non-trivial questions, why, why things happen, and uh, the last one, what if, so this is uh, where we can simulate the future, right, so these are seven questions which we need to answer. Uh, now, sample, sample questions, which uh, this could uh, be. So, uh, for instance, understanding history of last year's decade. This is, uh, everybody wants to understand the history, right? So this is important. So how events in the past were interconnected, how the history was structured. So these are typical questions, right? Then uh, root cause analysis. Uh, so what are likely causes leading to a, let's say, particular event of our interest? Uh, then event prediction. So we see the situation. So what will happen next uh, in terms of uh, events uh, or phenomena which we would like to see, right? Then simulating uh, future, I mentioned before, right? So what are likely future developments if an event, uh, uh, if an artificial event would happen? So if we inject a new situation, can we simulate what uh, this could be? This is extremely important for uh, testing our possible decisions, right, uh, for policymakers, right? And um, the last one, this is like uh, touching these unknown knowns or possibly even unknowns unknowns, uh, uh, so that uh, a machine would uh, uh, proactively uh, uh, warn us about surprising phenomena. Uh, we call this also anomaly detection. So uh, where we ask machine uh, uh, a question, so machine, please tell us what is of our interest, but we are not even able to ask about. So this is the, the last point, extremely important. Uh, um, okay, so now this was like a short introduction. Um, now, a uh, quick uh, example. Uh, it's not uh, complete, but uh, I would need a little bit more time, but not too much. So in January 21st, uh, uh, this year, I had a presentation for diplomats uh, at European Commission in Brussels. So this was one of my last physical uh, meetings this year, uh, where the point was to show this technology. Uh, uh, and I took uh, one example, which seemed like reasonable uh, back then. And this was coronavirus, which was appearing. So in January 21st was still really early. Uh, early time for this. Uh, I picked that um, uh, example, and uh, the point. I, uh, my my pitch was really how a new phenomena which was appearing in the world back then, right? Uh, how to sh how to explain it to people like policymakers, which has have extremely uh, short attention span and not really broad understanding. How to deliver information of such a complex information in maybe two, three minutes to explain the importance of such an event. So this here, I have just a couple of slides which I prepared back then. For instance, coronavirus, you see, there was a terrible uh, uh, event happening. Um, so China confirms 
139 cases of a new virus in two days. Can you imagine such a huge number of cases in two days, right? In such a short time, right? And uh, um, so yesterday, Slovenia had 136 uh, cases, right? Uh, just to put in perspective. Uh, and uh, so this was one summary slide, right? Which we can generate automatically out of the information of this new event. I won't go into uh, details, so all this is uh, operating online, but this is one, one view, how to structure these 10,000 articles which we collected back then on that uh, event. Uh, not just structuring in uh, this uh, more like table style, uh, we were showing where these corona events were happening geographically, so this is the world, US, uh, China, Europe, right? Uh, all this uh, operates uh, online, right? So I was showing this uh, live. Uh, how concepts are structured, how, how things are, how dots are connected, right? Um, and uh, also, while well, this particular event was not isolated, didn't appear from anywhere, how to make a storyline, how to put the event of this new coronavirus, which nobody knew about almost back then, uh, how to put it in perspective. So once you see this timeline of coronavirus events, suddenly, well, this was uh, quite a story already back then, although everybody was uh, still uh, kind of uh, uh, almost ignoring uh, the whole thing. Okay, so this was an example of situational awareness, how to squeeze fairly complex information event into two, three minutes and deliver it to uh, uh, policymakers. Okay, now the last part of my talk, uh, digital twins. I promised the digital twin technology uh, to um, how this could be applied in a, a government uh, situ uh, situations, right? Or this digital governance as we would call it. Uh, first, what is a digital twin? Um, before I made an introduction on the situational awareness. Um, uh, so basically this introduction was really, so digital twin is a technology which can automate uh, uh, situational awareness in complex systems. So let's first uh, just uh, have a quick sort of def definition of what a digital twin could be. So digital twins are really systems, actual tangible systems, which are replicating physical reality. Uh, reality of a physical world uh, in the digital world in near real time. This is very important that it's near real time so that we have digital copy of something which is happening outside, right? Uh, technology wise, so we have uh, maybe two basic approaches. It's either model based where we transfer our knowledge, uh, uh, expert knowledge into a system and this acts then as a, as a digital twin or data driven where we uh, take the data and we basically uh, uh, synthesize uh, 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 such a digital twin straight out of the data without any prior knowledge. And often we have hybrid digital twins which are combining uh, human knowledge and some uh, uh, data observed from let's say sensors or, or uh, whatever other data. So this is kind of quick, quick definition. Uh, where digital twins are used today uh, heavily uh, in uh, they're used to control complex systems mainly in like smart manufacturing automotive logistics energetics healthcare as well industrial IOT and so on uh, we have I've seen last year beautiful digital twin of a human body right Microsoft research uh, perfect system uh, but still in a lab right so uh, this technology goes that far uh, but uh, what about, um, uh, yeah, so wh why uh, having a digital twin is important? Uh, because once we have a digital copy of reality, uh, which is complete enough, then we can do many other operations on the top of such a digital twin. Uh, so we can do prediction, explanation, causal modeling, what if, visualization, many other things. So this is, uh, this is really the reason why we need a digital twin. Uh, everything uh, like integrating data and monitoring, all this might not look like easy, it's not easy, but we do all these things just to do this more, way more complex uh, operations on the top of it. And this allows us uh, to, to do situational uh, awareness. Now, what about digital twins for e-government? So this is the topic really, uh, which I promised in the title. 
Uh, so I checked the web a lot, right? So uh, I, I can say that beyond really informal announcements or mentioning it, um, to best of our or my knowledge, uh, there's, there are no real government or country level digital twins yet. Uh, why not? The key reasons are, I would say first, lack of integrated real-time data, complexity of government. Uh, government is a fairly complex system, right? Legal constraints, this is maybe uh, reason number uh, one why this is not moving faster because uh, uh, so legal constraints within a government uh, are, are, are way beyond what, what you would think. Um, and uh, also connected to risks for privacy and ethics and all the fears which are associated with this. So this is maybe, uh, in my experience, at least the, the main reason why things are not uh, easy in this, uh, let's say, why not to use digital twins for e-government. The fear of an unknown uh, magic AI technology, which uh, it's unclear what it will uh, deliver. Um, and also, there are no successful uh, use cases, uh, as a, um, uh, and also no, no generic digital twin technology. This is also maybe one of the uh, reasons. Now, COVID-19, right, crisis is a good opportunity. Why? Because the situation has changed, uh, the requirements changed as well. Uh, and uh, well, uh, recently I, I, I said this, uh, don't waste a good crisis uh, approach. So uh, in the time of crisis, some things are easier to change and uh, this seems like a good uh, opportunity. Uh, this is just uh, one slide, which I won't go too much into detail. So this is maybe uh, the, the best document I found on the web. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Gartner report on governments are developing a unique kind of digital twin. So this is from December uh, uh, 19, so roughly one year old um, and not much more really, right? Um, uh, I don't have a full document, but these are, uh, this is just a copy of the, this couple of bullet points the findings of one uh, Gartner analyst, which pretty much uh, resembles what, uh, what I was uh, saying uh, before on a, a really high level. So Gartner sees opportunity here as well, but not, not that I would, I, would, I would see that anything uh, beyond this really happened. There are a couple of more papers uh, or articles which are uh, uh, more like uh, uh, exercising uh, 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 this uh, plans how government could function on this. Uh, now, uh, to be a little bit more concrete, how we approach a country uh, digital twin in Slovenia. So at the beginning of this COVID crisis in uh, somewhere in March, I was called by crisis uh, management at the government and they asked me, well, Marco, what can you do uh, with your fancy AI uh, to help the situation? Uh, and uh, so uh, basically uh, the problem back then was that uh, the speed of uh, situation changing from day to day uh, and uh, the, uh, the, so the speed of reporting and government protocols was way too slow, right, for this uh, uh, change sit situation. Uh, uh, so the speed, accuracy and completeness uh, uh, of the information and analysis on the top of it. So this was government protocols were not suitable for this. Uh, on the other hand, what uh, I kind of um, uh, know or understand is that uh, all the data is somewhere, right? Uh, either uh, static or slow moving or uh, even better, real time, right? Uh, pretty much whole country is recorded, but on various isolated, disconnected spots. Now the point was, can we collect the real time sources which exist in the country and connect them into uh, something which uh, would be able to first model, understand the country, what's happening in the country in near real time, let's say on a daily basis at least, or even faster, um, and uh, to provide analysis and insights on the top of, top of it. So the idea was to use the existing technologies, uh, technology which we used otherwise for smart manufacturing and uh, other complex systems which we are modeling with this technology, but to apply it on the country level uh, digital twin. Uh, again, for the purpose of this faster informed decision making, right? So we started building this digital twin. And uh, so initially we uh, just took the open real-time data sources. There are a couple of them. 
these were not problematic. The problematic part started when uh, we tried to integrate the sensitive, the more sensitive data sources uh, and this additional legal legal uh, ground or uh, lawyers got involved and so on. This then, of course, made the whole situation much uh, uh, slower. So uh, in that respect, uh, so the, the, in particular, the, the, uh, the, the uh, jeopardizing privacy. This was a, the big fear still exists uh, and the fear of this new upcoming un, uh, uncharted te technology. Th th this is, I think, that was the biggest uh, uh, problem that the whole thing then slowed down a little bit because of uh, this. The system is still uh, in development, uh, but uh, parts of it are well used by, by the government or in various units of, of uh, the government. So this is pretty much the, uh, the status. Uh, so I just wanted, uh, this is uh, one of the last slides, uh, just to uh, tell you what, what kind of data sources uh, we uh, either integrated or uh, uh, are still uh, being in the process of being uh, integrated. So every country has statistical office, right? Uh, statistical offices uh, uh, collect data, organize them, everything is nice, but uh, typically this operates on a monthly or quarterly or even annual basis. So it's way too slow but the, the quality uh, of data is pretty high uh, and also the breadth of the data is high so statistical office data it's open typically right and uh, this serves as a contextual data what is the baseline what's the background right uh, of the country right um, uh, or this background information about the country so th this this served as uh, very uh, useful uh, but certainly uh, there was no dynamics in this since uh, we talk about the COVID crisis, so we have this health data uh, from hospitals and uh, other uh, health institutions, uh, including National Health Office. So this is, this is one source of uh, data uh, specifically for COVID, right? Uh, this was extremely important. Then pharmacies, general store sales, this tells us a lot. I don't know, pharmacies can tell us about the mental health of the nation. So hidden, hidden upcoming trends you can see from pharmacies very well because it's kind of informal, informal uh, 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 signal of uh, what people are actually buying, right? Then economic data from either micro on a transactional level or macro, uh, more like economic indicators. In particular, transactional data which can uh, come because of the way how Slovenia is organized, we can get like in minutes uh, after a transaction anywhere in the country happens, we can see it uh, uh, through financial administration. So this gives us real-time picture of how economy operates in the country. Uh, this is extremely useful, right? Because we see basically effects of any kind of government measure or, or even announcement we see immediately in this micro, micro behavior, transactional uh, uh, behavior of of, uh, of the country, how businesses, bars, uh, stores, and uh, many other uh, 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 parts of economy are functioning. Right? Then, uh, from this financial administration transactional data, we see individual spots of economy, but we still cannot connect them. So that's why the next level is supply chains. This is the really the the the. Uh, uh, the nervous system of, of the country are supply chains, how the economy is interconnected. If one can monitor in real time, more or less in close real time supply chains, then you see actually where the country is moving, right? Um, uh, so supply chain data is way harder to get because uh, it's distributed. There's no one spot where these uh, connections would be recorded, but it's uh, certainly possible. Transport, it's important, right? So this um, is not a big problem to get. And uh, you see, and this is one important aspect of the societal life, um, uh, to see how uh, uh, well people are moving across the country. And especially in the time of crisis, you would want to know uh, how many people go out of the country, how many people get into country and, and so on. This, this kind of, uh, this is important element. Here also, some of you might know, Apple and Google are providing on a weekly basis uh, uh, even more detailed uh, information on the transport on the, uh, for each uh, country uh, in the world. Um, Mar Marco, yeah. Marco, can you hear me? Can you, can you this is really interesting, I know. Um, but can you really uh, be fast and wrap up within the minute now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a minute. Uh, thank you, thank uh, you. Uh, 
then uh, media data uh, we have system where, where we can track all the mainstream media in the country in real time and social media which uh, initially was less important now uh, in the time of this uh, disinformation and uh, uh, social media is extremely important. So this, is, uh, this was well covered. This is even open and also informal uh, information from uh, society like social care institutions and so on. So this, these are generally the, the, uh, the data sources which we integrated and uh, built a digital twin on the top of it. Just in summary, the last slide. So uh, my message was, AI technology uh, is uh, useful and it's capable of doing real-time modeling uh, within this uh, digital twin uh, uh, paradigm, uh, especially when we need fast, accurate, and holistic decisions. This is very important. Uh, modern AI, not just the popular one, but the less popular AI with the elements of a little bit older AI, right? Uh, this is uh, something where uh, uh, we need to search for uh, solutions prediction, explanation, visualization, and simulating uh, societal scenarios. This is the, the, the kind of AI which we need. And uh, uh, as, uh, as said before, in digital governance, this technology is not being yet, uh, used yet. And uh, uh, I will just conclude with this, don't waste a good crisis. We have a good crisis now, and let's uh, use it to maybe change uh, some of these government uh, uh, procedures. As the last slide, a couple of links which you uh, uh, want to uh, click, right? Thanks.